Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. What does it mean to live in denial? That is refusing to accept reality for what it is because uh, we don't like it, therefore creating an uh, alternative reality, reality which sounds a little bit better so we feel more comfortable in looking at it. That's one explanation, obviously. Now, what do we have in Ukraine is for a lot of people living in denial. That is, people do not want to accept the fact that the good people uh, are fighting the <clears throat> bad people on the territory of Ukraine in order to destroy the bad people. That's not what they want to accept. They want to accept the fact that and this is where they uh, have their little uh, delusional worldview, actually is the Ukrainians who are just the victims of the evil uh, Russians, and we just help the poor victim Ukrainians against the evil Russians. So this is the alternate reality that we are um, helped to have in our brains by the beautiful mass media of the free world. The problem is you have to always feed this kind of alternate reality to us in order to keep this uh, denial story. What's going on in Ukraine, I think, is we got some interest, some global interest on one side and they are using a lot of countries to take care of one country in particular, which is in this case Russia, on the territory of Ukraine, using the Ukrainian nation to fight those evil guys, to nil them. All right, that's one uh, alternate reality. Now, is that the denial one? Is that the real reality? It's up to you to look into it. I said this um, a few times already and uh, I was just trying to make it sound nice but it's not that nice because it seems like it's gonna get to that point and this is the point I was making I said a few times that after the Ukrainian nation the Ukrainians yeah those guys uh, will cease to exist on the front they will be decimated by the Russians little by little and the Ukrainians will obviously kill Russians as well but the Russians are more numerous than the Ukrainians after Ukraine will have no more Ukrainians to fight those guys the interest will pick another country that will take the torch from the Ukrainians and use their nation to fight the Russians for them the next nation I mentioned could be Romania, could be Poland. I kind of omitted the Baltic states because there are only five million people. All right, so those three countries with big mouths, there are only five million people. That is half of a regular city. So that could be just uh, be taken care of very quickly by the Russians so that's why I ignore those but the Poles are almost uh, what 40 million uh, the Romanians are about 17 now that about 7 million immigrated uh, and some are in uh, Moldova 2.5 million or so or so used to be 4 million but hey they immigrated as well they could use the Georgians they could use the people from Kazakhstan they can use people from uh, Armenia so these guys over there, the big interests, will not care who and what nation they will use as long as they are safe, as a safe distance. They will just promote, like a promoter. You guys are fighting like idiots and I'm getting the money. I'm going to make the bets, I organize the whole thing and you guys fight. And after the fighter gets banged, you go, I don't care, I'm not going to pay for any medical expenses or funeral, I'm going to get another idiot. We're going to fight for me and we're going to, just going to be the promoter. This is what it seems, it seems, the word is seems to happen right now about this uh, Russia thing, not Ukraine. Ukraine is just one nation that will be taken care of 
and then these guys will pick another one. I have here an article that makes me, you know, um, how should I put it? Uh, make me be more certain about of whatever I just said. Let me share this article with you. So this article comes from Ukrainska Pravda. It is from April 8, 2023. Romanian F-16s intercept two Russian jet fighters while on duty in Baltic states. So the Romanian F-16s, which uh, F-16s are second-hand F-16s, I have, I have to add. So the Romanian weasels could not buy, you know, new F-16s. They had learned, uh, hand me over or hand me down F-16s. I can remember from Portugal, from I can remember what other country, a uh, real country. And they intercepted two Russian jet fighters while on duty in the Baltic states, not over Romania, somewhere in the Baltic states. I wonder if the Russians would have fucked up the Romanians or the other way around. What do you think would have happened? Let's say the Romanian F-16s would have downed the Russian jets. What do you think that would have triggered? Do you think the Russians would have said, okay, now it's your turn, Romania? And the guys were like, let's start the bets. We got another idiot country that is going to do the fighting for us. And we're going to help you. For your freedom, hate the Russians. Well, let's see what uh, this article says for Romanian fighter jets. They are based in the Baltic states. Romania has about what? 10 uh, F-16s, 15 F-16s, and they're based in the Baltic states. And probably on the Romanian territory, there are some Baltic states F-16s. Or uh, as we know, French, American, Belgians, Belgians. Belgium, Belgium, Belgium has armies, NATO contingents on Romanian soil. It's like a toddler will defend me from, I don't know, I don't know uh, Muhammad Ali or let's say Mike Tyson or Tyson Fury or whomever you want. This is unbelievable. So, Romanian fighter jets are based in the Baltic states within NATO air patrol mission took off to intercept two Russian Suhoi 27 fighters. On April 7th, six days into their duty as part of the enhanced air patrol mission in the Baltics, the pilots received a notification from the NATO Air Operations Center in Udem, Germany, about unidentified aircraft over international waters in the NATO area of responsibility self-assigned ascribed responsibility mind you after the interception the fighters were identified as russian suhoi 27s romanian pilots accompanied them to the exit from the area of responsibility of the alliance during just one week at the end of march fighter jets of the nato mission in the baltics took off six times to escort russian planes that violated the rules of flight in the international airspace over the Baltic Sea. What do you mean? If it's international airspace, fuck off. I thought, but hey, the rules of flight uh, set by whom? If it's international airspace. Well, I don't know details. This sounds like the Russians are the aggressors and we're gonna buy it because that's the alternate reality we are supposed to have. So you can live you, the ones who live in denial, thinking that, hey, it's just, uh, you know, the Russians attacked, um, un how do you call it, unprovoked uh, Ukraine because the Russians are just bad and they want to expand their territory because they are imperialistic powers with a stupid mentality. You know, you can have that. You can have that. That's living in denial. If you know that's more to that, that would change the whole paradigm of this little narrative. Well, I'm waiting, my Romanians. I'm waiting. I hope it doesn't happen. And uh, it could happen. One of these pilots make a mistake down the Russian plane or vice versa or both. They shot at one another. They just get damaged. And what do you think will happen? The big, how do you call it, uh, promoters of war will say, 
Ukraine is almost done. No more Ukrainians to be blown up. Let's get now the Romanian nation. And after Romania, that's Bulgaria. And after Bulgaria, that's Poland. All right, well, we'll see, my friends. We'll see. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.